Welcome to the Pelican Brief with your host, David Tapman. Welcome to the Pelican Brief. I am your host, David Tapman. Thank you for listening. In the 2023 election cycle, insurance was one of the major issues that people around the state talked about. Insurance costs were going sky high. Whether you're a homeowner, whether you drive a car, own a business, run a truck, insurance costs impact everyone in one way or another. And insurance rates have skyrocketed in Louisiana, whether you have a claim or not. The cost of insurance continues to grow. Our neighboring state's premium costs are significantly lower than they are in our state. Even Mississippi is better. Why? One of the major reasons is because we are outliers in so many ways. Our laws are antiquated and don't address the same issues that other states have addressed over time. So let's talk about them. Before we go on, I wanted to let my audience know that I am a licensed property and casualty insurance agent. I have held my license for over 25 years. I do not write insurance, but I work in the insurance space. So I'm going to work to break this down a little so that it is a little bit easier to understand. Now, I don't know everything, but I think I know enough to be dangerous. So let's go through this. Newly elected insurance commissioner, Tim Temple, has worked diligently to put together a package of bills to address the underlying issues that are causing Louisianians to pay some of the highest insurance rates in the country. Those bills or pieces of legislation are now being debated in key legislative committees in Baton Rouge. And it is the beginning of the process to bring Louisiana in line with the rest of the country. So let's talk about some of the major issues in the property and casualty arena, but let's start with homeowners. If you own a home, rent an apartment, you have some kind of coverage. If you don't, you should, if you can afford it. What are some of the issues that are driving up these homeowner insurance costs? Well, there are a few, and so I'll go through them. Just a couple, not every one of them, but just a few. So claims handling. People in Louisiana were not happy with the way their insurance claims were settled after hurricanes Laura, Delta, Zeta, and Ida. People felt helpless. When insurance claims are taking too long to settle you as a policyholder, well, you have a few options. You can comply with the insurance company's demands. You can hire an attorney. But you should always make sure that your claim is resolved to the satisfaction of what you believe you should have without needing to have to hire an expensive attorney. At the same time, cost of homeowner's insurance gets higher and higher, and right now is higher than ever. One significant factor in the cost is the expense of excessive lawsuits. Did you know that Louisianians are 12 times more likely to sue their homeowners insurer than any other coastal state? That's amazing. You wonder why insurance companies don't want to do business here. Louisiana sues homeowners insurance companies more than any other state, mainly because of our vague fair claims handling laws. There are two different laws that contradict each other, and we need to fix that. The cost of these lawsuits that are occurring are passed on to the people of Louisiana with high costs of homeowners insurance and the high cost of commercial insurance as well that trickles down from the trucks that bring the products to your door to the buses that roll on the street. You're going to pay more if insurance costs more. So the solution is to clearly define Louisiana's fair claims handling laws. The law must allow policyholders to force their insurance company to pay what they owe after a storm without needing to hire an attorney. Providing a clear claims process helps policyholders by establishing the rules they can follow to force insurers to fairly pay their claim. 
A clearly defined claims process also helps insurance companies by reducing the number of excessive lawsuits when the policyholder's needs aren't met without a trial. When an insurance company is intentionally underpaying, delaying payment, or otherwise hurting policyholders, they should be heavily penalized. However, the law must limit excessive lawsuits in cases where the insurer is doing everything that they can to help the policyholder. There are a couple of bills out there that will clarify the laws relative to fair claims handling. One of the bills is House Bill 678 by Representative Gabe Furman, who is also chairman of the House Insurance Committee, and Senate Bill 323 by Senator Kirk Talbot, who is also the chairman of the Senate Insurance Committee. Let's talk about another issue that we have in Louisiana. It's called the three-year rule. We talked about it on a previous episode, but in addition to our insurance being expensive, there are far far too few insurance companies offering homeowners policies in Louisiana. We need more choices. Competition lowers prices. There are many companies who write homeowners policies in other coastal states, including nearby states like Texas, Mississippi, and Alabama, that have the same kinds of hurricanes and weather as we do. They just don't do business in Louisiana. Why? Why would they do business in those states and not do business in Louisiana? Well, one reason is that those companies choose not to do business here because our laws are so restrictive unlike anywhere else in the country. And the biggest example of that is is this government overreach in what Louisiana calls the more than three-year rule. We are the only state in the country that has such a law, and we believe the only place on the planet that has such a restriction on insurance coverage. The law states simply that if an insurance company writes a homeowner's policy on a home for more than three years, three years in one day, so the fourth renewal, they cannot cancel, non-renew, or make changes to that policy for almost any reason. They must continue to insure that property no matter what. Insurance companies hate that law. And it becomes an outlier where we stick out like a sore thumb. And those companies, many of them, choose not to write any policies in our state because of the negative effects on their business. Think of nationwide insurance who writes almost everywhere in the United States except Louisiana. That's nationwide insurance, but they don't write in Louisiana. Nationwide is not on your side in Louisiana. Why? Because of our laws. So we need to make some changes. So we must look at those outliers like the three-year rule and work to try to make that law more reasonable. Now, it's a consumer protection, so I don't think anyone is actually thinking about repealing the law. But in the current insurance crisis, it's a significant issue in trying to bring companies back to Louisiana and still maintaining protections for the policyholders. So there's a couple of bills out there. House Bill 611 by, as I mentioned before, Representative Gabe Ferment, and Senate Bill 370 by Senator Adam Bass to provide a glide path toward a free market for insurers while protecting policyholders from widespread non-renewals. The bill sunsets the more than three-year rule so that it no longer applies to new policies moving forward. It also allows insurance companies to non-renew up to a certain percentage of policies that are currently protected by the law each year. So 5% of the policies could be non-renewed or canceled each year. This minimizes the impact on the overall market, sends a message to the industry that Louisiana is cleaning up its act, and allowing the relatively few policyholders that are non-renewed time to find coverage with another insurance company. So that's another area that we really need to do some work. Building better buildings, building back stronger is a term that's been used in government. So we live in a place where winds sometimes blow, blows in excess of 100 miles per hour. 
after storms, many homes suffer significant damage, especially to their roofs. Because insurance companies pay those claims, insurance prices are significantly higher in Louisiana and other coastal states and inland states with then the, with the inland states with fewer catastrophic losses. Over the past decade, storms have been occurring more frequently and tend to be stronger when they do make landfall. The solution is we must do everything that we can to ensure that homes and other buildings are built using the latest science to withstand the extreme conditions of the Gulf Coast weather patterns. The statewide building code is an important tool for ensuring the coast is hardened to withstand those storms. It must be continually updated with the latest science and construction techniques, and it's consistently an enforcement that is key to keeping our homes safe and strong. And an example is that the statistics show that if you can keep the roof on your home in a storm, your damages are 70% less than if you can't. So while a roof is not the most expensive part of a house, it is the key to protecting the value of the house and to lowering claims cost. And frankly, do you really want to have your roof blown, blown off and come back and find everything in disarray inside your house? So there are a couple of bills that will address that. House Bill 477 by Representative Foy Gadbury is an important step in that process. It would require permits when a new roof is put on a building, an existing home, giving transparency into the age and construction of a roof. Sometimes you'll have roofers who'll blow into town, throw a roof up and not do a good job, and you don't know who that roofer is or how to reach them. This is a way to begin to reel a lot of that in. The Fortified Homes Program is another important component of the strategy for building back better. Fortified is the gold standard developed by researchers examining the very best methods for constructing homes, and it should be the goal for everyone updating their home or building a new home or a roof to build it to the Fortified standards. So there's a couple of bills out there. Uh, House Bill 120 by Representative Matthew Willard uh, would expand access to the Fortified Home Program by extending Louisiana's grant program to help homeowners afford putting on a fortified roof on their home. Alabama has done great work in this arena, and that is one of the reasons why their premiums are lower than Louisiana. They're very serious about it, and they've done a great job. Now, they've been working at it for about 10 years, but this is something that Louisiana really needs to work with. Louisiana also needs to extend funding for the grant program as a part of the annual state budget. If we want insurance premiums to be affordable in our state long term, we need to build in a way that withstands the brunt of the hurricane we know will come, and we know they'll be bigger and stronger and tougher. So those are the the, the key items on the homeowner side, the property side. Let's now talk a little bit about auto insurance. Is your auto insurance too high? Again, we are outliers in so many areas in the law. And so let's talk about a few of the primary issues. So one of the primary reasons that Louisiana has high automobile insurance rates, the highest in the country, is because of the overutilization of medical services and inflated costs for medical claims from auto accidents. Louisiana law allows people involved in an automobile accident to collect substantially more than their actual paid medical expenses. When a person is injured in an auto accident, they have to pay at the time of the accident, so they frequently use their health insurance for the payment. The health insurance company pays substantially less than the build amount. That's just the way it works because they have arrangements with hospitals and providers that provide discounts. When they make a claim or file a lawsuit, when the individual person who is injured in an in a auto accident files the lawsuit against the, the driver that hurt them or caused the accident, Louisiana law awards 40% of the difference between the billed amount and the paid amount. Now, is that really what insurance is for? 
Insurance is to be made whole, not to be made rich. If you are going to use insurance to make people rich, be prepared to pay for higher insurance rates. Plaintiff's attorneys can also make a discounted payment to medical providers and seek recovery of the difference between the billed and the charged amount. In both cases, the plaintiff recovers substantially more than their actual medical costs. Payment of inflated medical expenses drives up the cost of automobile insurance premiums for everyone. So what's the solution? There are a couple of bills out there. House Bill 423 by Representative Michael Mellorine and Senate Bill 18 by Senator Alan Sebaugh uh, would address those issues. There's also a couple of other bills, Senate Bill 244 and Senate Bill 382 by Senator Kirk Talbot, who I mentioned before, seeks to change that language in Louisiana law. All the bill seeks to do is to provide transparency to what the actual medical costs are and to reduce and and to eliminate the inflated recovery in excess of what is actually paid in medical expenses. So that is another area that we can address insurance crisis in the auto world. So what's, a, what's another one in the auto world? Louisiana is one of only three states that allows direct access, direct uh, action against an insurance company. Louisiana, Wisconsin, and Rhode Island are the only three states that still allow for the insurer to be the named defendant in the suit. In 47 states, when a person is hurt in an automobile accident, they sue the at-fault driver. Of course, the driver's automobile insurance com- company does the same thing. They defend, they pay on their behalf to their limits. The insurance company just generally is not normally named in a lawsuit. In Louisiana, a plaintiff can name the insurance company as the primary defendant. Courts are much more likely, and juries are more likely, to award more and larger payments against big out-of-state insurance companies than they would Joe down the street or Joe's auto shop down the street. It's just a, it's a mental thing, but it, it clearly has an impact when 47 other states don't do it. A direct legal action discourages insurance companies from wanting to do business in Louisiana, and it clearly increases claims costs, which results in higher automobile insurance premiums. So the solution, well, there's a few of them. House Bill 337 by Representative Jack McFarland and Senate Bill 250 by Robert Allah would bring Louisiana's law in line with 47 other states. The legislation would prohibit direct legal action against an insurance company with a few exceptions like death of a defendant and such. So that's another area that we can address auto insurance rates. Another area is a a, a third-party litigation. In recent years, private equity firms and other investors have started loaning loaning money to attorneys to finance lawsuits. They pay all of the expenses for the lawyer to sue someone, and then they receive a cut from anything the lawyer wins in court. The return on these loans are reported to be somewhere in the 20 to 40 percent range, which is pretty high from a credit standpoint. This can cause a number of problems, including dramatically increased number and costs of trials, mixed incentives if the injured person wants to settle the case, but the financier thinks that they can get more money, how will the lawyer respond? And then security concerns with foreign countries and other foreign entities getting access to privileged material as the financier with an interest in the case. The solution, House Bill 336 by Representative Emily Chenevere and Senate Bill 8 by Senator Rick Edmonds. It does not prohibit the use of third-party litigation financing. The bill requires that the plaintiff's attorney disclose the third-party litigation financing to the defendant and to the court. 
The bill also prohibits third-party financiers from being involved in the decision-making strategy and the settlement of the case. Clearly, the injured person is the one who should make that call. Senate Bill 355 by Senator Jeremy Stein goes a step further in the case of foreign actors by restricting access to certain cases and providing for transparency and oversight for the attorney general and others. There is a saying that doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results is the definition of insanity. There are there has to be change. We cannot continue as a poor state spending a disproportionate share of our income on insurance when insurance is becoming more of a lottery than a an effort to be made whole. So those are a few of the things that are going to uh, are going to be discussed uh, in Baton Rouge at the Louisiana State Capitol. As always, you can tune in to the State Capitol activities every day. You can watch live. The website for the Louisiana State uh, Legislature is www.legis.la.gov. You can also just Google Louisiana Legislature. Anything you want to find is there. You can read the text of bills. You can watch committee meetings. You can watch archived committee meetings. There's another cool website that I would direct you to, and it's and I, I'm going to say it slow, and we'll put it in the show notes, but it's make-la-insurance-affordable.com. That's make-la-insurance-affordable.com. You can get a lot of really good information on the bills. And and frankly, it's a way that you can go to that website and you can actually reach out and communicate with legislators on this platform to let them know that, hey, I want my insurance rates to be uh, brought under control. I don't want to be last and everything, including my insurance rates, please vote in support of these packages that are basically going to bring Louisiana in line with the rest of the country. So that's our show today. Subscribe and follow to get our regular shows each week for updates on the legislative session. And then a special editions like this, we're going to dive deep into other issues like insurance in Louisiana as we move through the process. As always, you can find us at www.thepelicanbriefpodcast.com. That's www.pelicanbriefpodcast.com. You can email us, david at pelicanbriefpodcast.com. You can follow us on all social media platforms at Pelican Brief 225. That's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all of them. And you can also find us in a podcast format on all of the podcasting uh, outlets, Apple, Spotify, Amazon, you name it, we're there. And then um, finally, uh, you can uh, watch us if you want to go through that on YouTube. Uh, our handle on YouTube is at the Pelican Brief 225. So thank you again for tuning in. Until next week, we are the Pelican Brief. The Pelican Brief is an off script production.